we saw in calculus one that we have a set of rules that help us calculate limits using more elementary limits. We can apply these rules directly if we convert our sequence to a function in x, or we can also derive a similar set of rules for calculating limits of sequences. If I have two sequences, an and bn, which are convergent, and c is any constant below, then if I construct a sequence, let's call it the sum of the two sequences, where the nth term of the new sequence is an plus bn, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of the sequences is the sum of the limits, and we're assuming here that both of these limits exist. The limit of the sequence constructed by subtracting corresponding terms of the two sequences, an minus bn, is the difference of the limits. The limit of a sequence where all of the terms are constant is c, whatever that c might be. If I take the sequence an and multiply each term by c, then the limit as n goes to infinity of c times an is c times the limit as n goes to infinity of an. And if I construct a new sequence from my two sequences by multiplying corresponding terms, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the product of the terms is the product of the limits. And again, if I construct a sequence from my two sequences by designating that the nth term is an over bn, then the limit as n goes to infinity of an over bn is the limit of an over the limit of bn if the limit of bn is not equal to zero. So we saw a similar restriction when we talked about functions. If I construct a sequence from an by raising each term to the power of p, then the limit as n goes to infinity of an to the p is the limit as n goes to infinity of an all raised to the power of p. And that's assuming p is positive here and an is positive. In fact, if I have f of x as any continuous function and I apply that to every term of my sequence, then the limit as n goes to infinity of f of a n is f of the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. Let's use our rules to calculate some limits. Suppose this is my sequence and the nth term is the cube root of 2n plus 1 over n minus 1 over n. Then, assuming these two limits exist, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the difference is the difference of the limits. The limit as n goes to infinity of the cubed root of 2n plus 1 over n can be simplified further. It's the cubed root of the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1 over n because the cubed root is a continuous function. And now I can actually convert both of these functions, 2n plus 1 over n and 1 over n, to functions in x by replacing the n by x I get continuous functions as x goes to infinity, and I can use my rules of limits for functions to calculate these limits. So I get the cube root of the limit of a rational function minus the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. And remember, when calculating limits of rational functions, the best thing to do is divide by the highest power appearing in the denominator, and in this case, that's 1. So our limit becomes the cube root of the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 plus 1 over x over 1 minus the limit of 1 over x, which is 0. And of course, our answer here is the cube root of 2. So therefore, our sequence, where the nth term is given by the cube root of 2n plus 1 over n minus 1 over n, converges to the cube root of 2.